All Saints Church West Ham, ladies and gents, and this is a nice little start off to it. Happy Easter, everyone, and God bless to any of my religious friends. Lovely to hear. <coughs> Good morning, everyone, and a happy Easter to you all. And it's one more or less on my own doorstep today. All Saints Church, West Ham. One of the oldest churches in Newham. 12th century for the most part. I'll just point it up a minute because someone's coming along. Um, there are some gravestones here. Uh, there. Mr. Francis Porter. Mrs. Francis Porter, late wife of Mr. Robert Porter of this parish, who departed this life September the 7th, 1790, aged 38 years. Also William, and then it's worn away there. But yeah, our main view is for the uh, church. Oh, and you notice the churchyard here and particularly there, is raised up quite a bit higher than the church. I'll get to that in a minute. But there is a reason for that. There is a good reason for that. And a bit of a dark one, I'm afraid. And there we are, that's London for you. It's a lovely day. Couldn't wish to get a nicer day. Beautiful old church. There we are. Let's take a picture of that. Oh, how charming. And quintessentially English. I've been in and I've filmed inside already. Um, they're really nice people, actually. This great big mound here, and the reason that the churchyard is sloped up quite higher than the rest of the church as we're going to see as we go round. That is because of the plague, the Great Plague of 1665, that not only struck this parish, but struck all of London. And not many, but some outlying parishes from the city of London, for a rather a hefty sum of money, it must be said, agreed to take cartloads of plague dead and have them buried in their churchyards. This was one of them. The locals were not pleased. When the plague got really bad, some villages barricaded themselves so outsiders couldn't get in and out of the village. But yeah. And uh, Plasto lost an awful lot of people. Plasto was a little village in those days, set around this church, nothing like what it is now. And it lost an awful lot of people for a small country parish. Um, some blamed it on the plague dead being brought in. That's That's a twig, thank goodness for that. I thought that was a bone sticking out of the ground. It does look like a bone, I must admit. Yeah. This is like a newer part of the church, this annex area. But this is lovely, this church porch. As I say, for the most part, the church is uh, 12th century. And it's uh, it, has a, it has minor disputes with... Um, St Mary Magdalene at East Ham, about which is actually the oldest. We shan't stay there for too long. Do not wish to get copyrighted. And bless her, bless her little soul. She's, she's not very good at singing, is she? Mm -hmm. Shall we put her to something else? Shall we? Yes, singing isn't her forte, is it? Sorry. We've got a stone over here. And this is here are, and it's a restored one, here are interred the remains of John Heinecke. Let me cross over here. Cross over a grave, not into the other life, preferably. Ah. Here are deposited the remains of John Heinecke, merchant of Stratford House, who died 1749, and of Hannah, his wife, who died 1745. This monument is erected by their eldest son, John, 1st Lord Heinecke, 
restored in 1926. I said it had been restored. See? I told you. But yeah. I love churches, particularly old ones. Um, we wasn't able to go into the bell tower, like many of the churches that I ask if we can go into the bell tower. No, they said, I don't. They said really we only let the people that ring the bells or manage the bells in there because it's health and safety nowadays. And if anything did happen, I mean, you can imagine the kerfuffle of it, can't you? They won't risk it. They do not wish, they do not wish to have a, a death or a massive insurance claim on their hands, I should imagine. Mr. Samuel Cook died October 1796, aged 44 years. Mrs. Mary Cook died obit November the 2nd, 1794, aged 50 years. That's pretty well preserved actually. And yet, oh God, oh I'm sinking into the ground. Ooh. Gosh, how horrid. I'm not ready to make that journey yet. Not quite yet. Ooh. Ouch, that hurt. And you can see how high up it is compared to the rest of the churchyard. It was, as the parish grew and it did grow, um, it was part of the 1851 Burials Act really as well. By that time the parishes were so full up that it was becoming a real health hazard. To the memory of Elizabeth Neal, daughter of William Neal. Daughter of William and Catherine Neal, who died January the 18th, 1827, aged four years. Also of Mary Catherine Neal, mother of the above, who died, and I'm not going to start pulling stinging nettles and things and whatnot apart. Yeah, that's just a couple of them. Mr. James Carter who died March the 1st, 1835, aged 33 years. Also, Mr. James Carter, father of the above, who departed this life, September, and the day is gone, 1842, aged 63 years. Also, Mrs. Elizabeth Carter, wife of the above, James Carter, senior, who died 10th of, that's going to be October, no, it's August. Yeah. G-U-S-T, August 1845, aged 75 years. Also, Mr. Charles Carter died on the 26th of March 1850, aged 41 years. Yeah, that's just a few of the past parishioners. I won't go too many. And here you have a sundial. Under this tomb lies the body of Mr. Clement Pragel, who was born in this parish and he left forever five pounds a year to the poor of the same and 20 shillings a year for the eight pounds a year for the upkeeping of this and the next tomb. He died, it's got D Y E D, uh, the 16th day of March, Anno Domini, 1680, and was aged 73 years. That's pretty good age for back then. <coughs> Can't make out that one, I'm afraid. That is. But it's repaired by the Church Wardens, Anno Domini, 1788. Very much like an altar tomb, that. Sim much plainer, but similar to Anne of Cleves' design. Oh, look. Easter eggs for the children. How kind.
Oh look, 2003 restoration work. I spy with my not so subtle eye the entrance into a crypt, I believe. Padlocked and f yeah, I don't know. If, I think oh, I don't know if it's a drain or whatnot. It's got all water in it anyway, so I shan't be going in there. <laughs> and I don't tread on any dog muck. You may say the hell's going to let their dog mess in a churchyard in London. Lots of people. It's damned wire. Excuse me a minute, I'll just pause you a sec. Here we are. Wire keeps getting tangled up. Make our way over this way. Sorry about the juddering about. I'm just holding it one handed because I'm being very careful where I'm going. I've got decent smart shoes on today, leather ones, and I don't fancy having to clean dog feces off of them, shall we say. As I say, I've already filmed the inside. Cool, look, you can tell that's Tudor, can't you? Let's get out of the way of the lamppost. And preferably the sun, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that with this one. So you'll have to bear with it. That's Tudor. Beautiful church. And I can hear the music, so I'll step us away a little bit. Because of the co- Ow! It's trodden a stick. Because of the copyright issue. Copywriting, unfortunately, is a big problem for live streamers and if you spend time doing a video and stuff you don't want it being muted or taken off TikTok is the worst for the copywriting but for anyone that does do TikTok a little tip when you dispute the when they take it off you get it to review it and dispute it click the uh, thing that says my video I've had this video posted on other platforms without a problem I've ticked that more or less for everyone and I haven't had many problems oh that's better that you can catch that little Tudor turret castle kind of thing there. Looking structure. Oh, how charming. Sacred to the memory of Mr. Albert Darnit. No, Mr. Robert, darn it. So he's walking over there then. It's got several entrances into this churchyard. that in there on the opposite side and they've had to put metal over it because of the vandalism over the years is a beautiful stained glass window you will see the inside of it one last zoom around of the churchyard and aspect the Greyhound pub's still over there for anyone that knows the area Lovely. G.H. Carter Esquire, JP, Chairman of the Council. Hmm. It really is raised up a lot higher than the than the path and the what it would have originally been. And you can see here with old gravestones that they've put them to sort of back it up a bit. 
and they are gravestones look you can see September 1720 something age 69 years oh. so, yeah it's a lot higher than the than the path and in those days the unpleasant thing was they didn't bury very deep hence the health problems that sprung up quite frequently and the nasty smell as well hmm. after the plague every churchyard or place that had had plague dead buried in it was all ordered to cover each churchyard and i think it was a foot or two foot of soil so there was some nasty stories of uh, people walking through churchyards and past plague pits and seeing hands and elbows sticking out through the loosely scattered soil over the top and you can imagine the smell can't you anyway that's our little tour of the outside and in we go Sorry.
Let's play. Sixteen seventy nine, wow. Yeah. This is the Belfry area above. Beautiful stained glass, look, it's stunning. got more memorials and things here. The electric light was installed in this church through the liberality of John Reynolds Roberts Esquire, JP, and was used on the first time, 1st of October 1903. I like that. The above stone is a relic of the ancient abbey of West Ham, founded in 1134 and was placed here AD 1903. One of those type of churches that you can literally feel the history inside. And look, that's the bell tower up in there. The public unfortunately cannot go. But I'll show you just. It's like the um, one at St Anne's at Limehouse. It goes up in like a spiral staircase and you can hear the bells, look. How charming. That's uh, got to be a female bell having the last word. Sorry, ladies. You know me. I've got some no airs and graces. Some more memorials and stuff over right here. done. Very worn away. Such a glare. 
One feels as if one were unsure of the gaiety. This is Judith Smith. And the font, look, this font is beautiful. And very, very old. The last part of this church is uh, built in the 12th century. We are live for Nicholas. I'll take a picture of it and have a look later. Because the service will start soon. Oh, pews there. Here's the organ. And you've got an old funeral brass here, look. This area, which I will only point above, there's children in there, that you can see remnants of the old um, wall paintings. Really nice. a little side chapel in there but it's a children's area and, it's, and there's children in there so I won't film that bit. You know my edict on not filming of children. Where's my bag? Look at that, it's just over there. Right ladies and gents, I hope you've all enjoyed this one. We've got a churchyard tour to do afterwards if possible so yeah that'll be that. See you there if possible. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have something nice. That's lovely, that stained glass. Hope you've all enjoyed. Thank you for watching.